<clears throat> Look at a little goblin junior. Wanna cry? Welcome back to the Real Screen Team. I'm Andrew Thomas. I'm here with my fellow spider man, Christopher Johnson. Hello, everyone. And we're here to finish the, Co the Tobey Maguire trilogy with Spider-Man 3, the mixed bag of them all. You know, looking back at it, it's not as bad as I remember it. Yeah. But we'll get into that. Want to get into the overview? Sure. <clears throat> Spider-Man 3 is a 2007 superhero film based on the Marvel Comics character Spider-Man. The film was directed by Sam Raimi from a screenplay written by Raimi, his older brother uh, Ivan Raimi, and Alvin Sargent. It is the final installment of Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy. The film stars Tobey Maguire as the titular character, alongside Kirsten Dunst, James Franco, Thomas Hayden Church, Topher Grace, Bryce Dallas Howard, James Cromwell, Rosemary Harris, and J.K. Simmons. This film also marks the final film appearance of Cliff Robertson before his retirement and then unfortunate death in 2011. Can we get into synopsis? Okay. A year after the events of Spider-Man 2, Peter Parker is preparing his future with Mary Jane Watson while facing three new villains. Uncle Ben's true killer, Flint Marco, who becomes Sandman after a freak accident. Harry Osborn, his former best friend, who is now aware of Peter's identity and seeks to avenge his father. And Eddie Brock, a rival photographer. Peter also faces his greatest challenge when he bonds with an extraterrestrial symbiote that increases his abilities, but also brings out his anger and other negative traits. Well, I thought the our original cast old did well, like Tony oh, Maguire, yeah. even, yeah. even when he was emo Peter. <laughs> I thought he was even uh, more. He was even more entertaining as emo Peter, in my opinion. He was finally got the quips down more in this one. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, had the personality there, although his he let his ego go to his head. Yeah, by letting another girl kiss him as Spider Man. Yeah, and then of course. Ah, uh, the dancing. You gotta love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, yeah, to Tobey Maguire was definitely great. Yeah. Uh, and especially when he was dealing with the dread of knowing what the symbiote is doing to him and, you know, him trying to get rid of it. Yeah. I mean, that, that was an intense scene. It was. I thought the Venom so so you look good in the in the movie as well with the yeah. Peter part, yeah. Yeah, it definitely looked fantastic. Even though he only fought him once, even though he only fights like once with the black suit yeah. against Sam Man. Yeah. That's only out for revenge. <laughs> Thanks yeah. to the Venom symbiote. Yeah. And which you definitely feel that the anger has definitely turned up yeah. when he's got the black suit on. And then, of course, uh, when he's trying to get back at Mary Jane. Yep. Oh. Mm -hmm. Of course, that awkwardness. He realized what he's done once he accidentally hits her during the fight. <laughs> yeah. After. When did he know how to play the piano? 
<laughs> probably the symbiote, probably. How does the symbiote know how to play the piano? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and then him dancing, and, and then, oh no, I'm a monster. Yeah. Yep, he goes, he still goes through this, pretty much the same thing. Yeah. Though I do, I do wonder, why did, why did they try to give Tobey Maguire the quaff? I have no Why'd idea. Why'd they try to give him the emo quaff? I have no idea. <laughs> um, well, speaking of Mary Jane, um, I like Kirsten Dunst a little bit more in this film compared to the second one. Yeah, she tries to help Peter out during his, his thing, although she, she has her own problems getting kicked out. Out of the Broadway musical. Yeah. Uh, and also, I think her being a bit jealous. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that's also the reason why she kissed Harry was also as a comeback. Yeah. I mean, come on. The man Spider-Man. Are you surprised that he's going to end up becoming, you know, as popular and famous as he is? This man just saved all of New York City from a crazed goblin man on his own glider and an octopus man that almost blew up all of New York City. Both with her holding her hostage. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, are you surprised? Come on now, Mary Jane. Get over yourself. Yeah, I know you feel... I, I know... You did your best with the Broadway musical, but come on. Come on. But, hey, hey. She's at least doing better than she did in Spider-Man 2 with yeah. her being freaking two-timer fair-weather sailor. And then James Franco foreshadows his future James franco -ness. <laughs> With the meme. <laughs> oh, so many memes. Yeah. So many memes. Him looking down at Peter while <laughs> Peter's enjoying the musical. <laughs> that smile when he, that he gives Peter after he walks out of the cafe. <laughs> yep. Future comedian James Franco coming... And then some people trying to say he was channeling Tommy Wiseau. Yeah. But it him having the the eye thing yeah. was actually him referencing how Norman looked when he was in um the elevator for when they were about to have Thanksgiving dinner. Of course he was much more funny when he had amnesia, short term. <laughs> hey, I know that face. <laughs> hey, buddy. My best friend. <laughs> yeah. Forgot ever. Yep, if only it stayed that way. If it only the ghost of Norman didn't come back to bring back his memory. Yeah. The rest of his memory. <laughs> yeah. And then he becomes a diabolical villain. Oh, yeah, you can feel the Lex Luthor at this point. Yep. You can feel the Lex Luthor. Him and Peter's fight scenes, Al Costume, were like the best parts in that movie. Were the best fight scenes in that movie, pretty much. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm definitely going to kick your little ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one when Peter's going to. We're trying to. Go ask Mary Jane to marry him, and before you, then the emo Peter versus Harry, <laughs> where this man legit. I mean, Harry, did you really? Ex what did you expect mm. with throwing that pumpkin bomb? Mm. But Peter just gonna throw it back to him well. and not care at all if Harry lived or died. <laughs> Of course, then he becomes Scarface. Yeah, yeah. Half his face scarred, and I think he's blind in that eye now. Yeah. 
Which makes me wonder, how in the world was he as effective as he was in the fight without, you know, yeah, depth that's... perception and being able to, you know, that, see? I think Harry has the most heel turns in this movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So many More than turns. Toby in this one. It's, more, it's mainly James <laughs> doing the heel turn. I'll kill you. Oh, we're friends. I'll kill you again. Okay, I'll, I'll help this time. <laughs> so many face and heel turns. <laughs> My God, is this man Paul White, the big show? <laughs> I swear. Yep. But James Franco was great, though. Yep. Well, with talking about one antagonist, why don't we go into the other? Thomas Hayden Church as Flint Marco. Same man. Same man. He was a good, sympathetic villain. Yeah. You really felt for Flint. Yeah. I mean, dude isn't a criminal for his own sake. He yeah. Of course, they retcon him being Uncle Ben's killer. I thought that was also a thing I, in the comics. I don't really know on that one. I need to really check that one. I thought that I thought that was a thing in the comics mm. and in the animated series. Mm. But anyway, um, you know, he's not doing criminal acts for his own sake. He's yeah. doing it because of his daughter. Yeah. You know, his daughter is ill mm. and he wants to get enough money to help her in treatment. Mm -hmm. And of course, that doesn't make things any better, you know. Yep. With his estranged wife. And accidentally killing Uncle Ben. Yeah. And him dealing with the guilt of that. Yeah. You know. Although his only payback with Spider-Man was when Spider-Man tries to kill him. In the yeah. Venom. That's the only time he wants revenge. Yeah, which, I mean, can, yeah. can you blame no. him? You turned me into mud! Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's already bad enough that... He just the, cops be alone. Out, the cops are out for me. My wife hates me. My daughter is sick. And I fell into a freaking collider that has made me into half man, half sand. I'm going through some rough stuff. And you trying to kill me? How dare you? <laughs> of course. He also shows up in No Way Home. Yes, but... Most of the time is sand. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll get more into that in the way yeah. home. Yeah. But, I, I mean, I really enjoyed Tom Hayden mm. Church's performance. Yeah. And, you know, you really felt it when he said, I'm not a bad guy. Mm -hmm. Just had bad luck. Yep. Yeah. Yep, and then we get to the other one, Eddie Brock. Junior. <sighs> Played by Topher Grace. Ah. Now we start getting into some of the more difficult parts. Now, I'm a fan of Topher Grace. Big fan. Of that 70s show. Yes. One of my favorite shows of all time. Definitely excited for that 90s show coming soon. Mm -hmm. But, as... Topher did his best, but he did not fit being Eddie Brock. He didn't even feel comfortable being Eddie Brock when he was asked for the casting. He says on the interview, he said when he got cast, he wasn't quite sure because he actually read the comics. He was yeah. a big avid comic book fan. Yeah, and Eddie is supposed to be, you know, big buff guy that, you know, has this contemptuous relationship with Peter because he's also a photographer and, yeah, they, you know, sometimes he tries to bully Peter, but Peter's able to stand up for himself. But here he's just the, the other version of, little and the other, the opposite of Toby. They pretty much look alike. That's pretty much why they were cast. True. Why he was cast. True. To be the opposite of t Toby. <laughs> On that one. And he was obsessed with Gwen Stacy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Apparently he had a little fling with Gwen. That It was just a coffee date. <laughs> <laughs> that he tried to make it seem like it was so much more. Yeah. But apparently Gwen wasn't into him. 
Yeah. <laughs> of course, once it becomes Venom, he becomes a vampire. He becomes a vampire Eddie. Because, yeah. he, because we hardly see the face of the actual Venom yeah, symbiote. Yeah. We don't get to see much of Venom in full Venom. No, it's just peeled back. Uh, Topher Grace with vampire teeth, mm -hmm. which that's not how the symbiote works. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get in his mouth <laughs> like that and giving him, you know, vampire teeth. That's not how it works. Yeah. But with, uh, speaking of Gwen Stacy. Yeah. Yeah. Gwen Stacy played by Bryce Dallas Howard. Yeah. We finally get to talk about a time where Bryce Dallas Howard actually plays a very nice and likable individual. Mm -hmm. Because, of course, we all remember what she was as Elton John's mother. Yeah. Which, seriously, how... She's one of the few American actors that can do a very good British accent. Yeah. And she's daughter of Ron Howard, famous director. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Uh, happy days. Yep. But, hey, Bryce was great as Gwen Stacy. Yep. You know, she was very likable. Yep. It appears like she had a crush on Peter also on there, which kind of ended after she realized she was being used. As, like, as for, essentially more of a pawn uh, for Peter's endgame to yep. make Mary Jane feel bad about herself. Yep. Ah, uh, which leads to piano playing, dance number, and then, oh no, I'm a monster. <laughs> and unlike other media, she doesn't die in this movie. I know. Yeah. She just disappears. We never see her again. Well, uh, yeah, she peaced out. <laughs> but, oh, this Spider-Man was able to save her. Mm -hmm. Foreshadowing. Foreshadowing. And James Cromwell was good as Captain George Stacy for his... Yeah, he doesn't really... Have much of a... Yeah, a, yeah, he doesn't hate Spider-Man. He respects Spider-Man. Yeah. In this version. <laughs> he likes and respects Spider-Man in this version, especially saving his daughter. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yeah, yeah, what a waste of time of James Cromwell, just using him just for exposition, mainly. True. This is, and, um, oh yeah, we actually forgot to talk about them in Spider-Man 2, but I guess they had a bit more of a greater yeah. thing in Spider-Man 3. Mr. Dickovich and his daughter Ursula, mm -hmm. played fantastically by Elia Baskin and Magina Tova. And Ursula looks like she had, might have a crush on Peter. <laughs> My dad. Okay, have. she has a crush on Pete. Oh yeah, big crush. Although, although, the, although her father started out mainly as a jerk in Spider-Man Two. Spider-Man Three, he's a lot more mellowed out <laughs> for the most part. <laughs> oh no, but he still wants rent. Yeah, you give me my rent. Will you fix this damn door? <laughs> oh God. But, uh, yeah, when Peter freaks out on him, he's like, he good boy. He think he's just going through mm -hmm. things. You know, yeah, Mr. Dickovich did kind of mellow out a bit yeah. by this one. I mean, the first Spider-Man 2, good mm -hmm. lord. Man chasing after him while he's in mid-poop. <laughs> he has his own senses every time someone tries to get away. He needs rent. <laughs> <laughs> you don't mess with a man when it comes with his money. Yeah. But um, with Ursula, you can really tell that despite the fact that she really likes Peter, she really does support Peter in, you know, mm -hmm. his relationship with Mary Jane. Yeah. And that's commendable. Yeah. But really, in my opinion, I think Peter should have been with Ursula. Mm -hmm. Despite him probably having to pay rent rest of his life. Mm -hmm. And then 
We get the other supporting cast back. Ah, uh, yes. J.K. Simmons, still doing his best. As J. Jonah Jameson, though he's trying to calm down. Yeah. He's trying to with, calm with down. With all the but, heart pills and stuff. <laughs> but he still can't calm down because he's J. Jonah Jameson and he needs pictures of Spider-Man. Uh, of course, Betty Brink gets a thing with email Peter. Yeah, where uh, Peter was really trying to get the moves on her. Yeah, then we get the faint, f fun J. Jonah Jameson <laughs> line. We're like, what? What? I pay you to be a secretary, not whatever. <laughs> yep, of course, along with the other cast, they were um, still pretty well. Yeah, Rosemary Harris is still great. Yep, who's still giving out the advice. And, hey, uh, Dylan Baker's back as Dr. Kirk Connors yep. and has more of a more of a supporting role in this one. Yep. He he tells Peter all about the symbiote and stuff. Yeah. And actively, you know... Against it. Yeah. You know, him actively doing some, you know, experiments on this thing and realizing, oh, oh my God, um, this thing is dangerous. Peter, did you keep any? No, of course not. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. You can't stop me. You can't stop me in my dancing. <laughs> yeah, but it was really good to Kirk Connors, although i sad that we never got to see him as the lizard. Yeah, yeah, we were robbed of that. I feel bad for Dylan Baker because I think he would have been fantastic. Yeah. But, hey, hey, we did have another great actor that did a good job. Yep. Yeah, foreshadowing. Yep. Yeah. But let's go into the good in the mix. Well, we kind of... Got into everything, although in the... Well, the reason Venom came into this movie was because the studio demanded it. Sam Raimi yeah. only wanted... So I think Sam Raimi wanted, like, the same and then the Vulture in this movie, then they're like, no. Yeah, that that actually was the idea he wanted. He wanted Sam... I think initially he wanted Sam and Vulture, but he realized, oh, we already kind of set up Harry being the new goblin. Yeah. So we got to do that. And then, oh... The studio is pushing for Venom. And Sam Raimi isn't necessarily the biggest fan yeah. of the Venom character. So, so of course, he didn't necessarily do his best work as far as, you know, writing and directing the character. Yep. I mean, the best work was definitely done for Sandman and um, for Harry. Yeah. Especially the fight scenes, and yep. I, I know this man got you know super strength and everything, but how in the world did that man not die with how many ways he hit his head mm -hmm. yeah. to get amnesia? Of course, he, until he finally dies. <laughs> uh, they were foreshadowing his death this whole entire time with all the head hits he got <laughs> and be blown up. So many Chekhov's guns. <laughs> yep. Uh, uh, like we said, the, the Venom parts weren't that great on there. The romantic plot humor. Yep. It's too many villains. Yeah, which not enough time to really do their best. Yeah. For all three of them. Yeah. Um, dear God, Pete... Peter and Mary Jane are kind of selfish in this one. Yep. You know? In this one, they're kind of meant for each other for being selfish. Yeah, because their egos are out of the stratosphere. Yep. Um, Peter was definitely... That, 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 you shouldn't have done Gwen like that, man. Yeah. That's messed up. That's messed up. So he still gets picked on in college because Sam Raimi. <laughs> I mean, seriously. 
Toby said in the, in the commentary that he's, that Sam just likes to torture him. <laughs> because people don't do that in college. I swear. But then again, some people can be monsters in college. Yeah. I ran into a couple. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, with you talking about too many villains. Yeah. Who really was the main villain? Yeah, that's a good question. Depends on, well, depends well, on the promotion. It's mainly they set up Venom, but it's like we have like two other people in the. I mean, we initially have Harry wanting vengeance. Yeah. Then Sandman comes in. Yeah. And, and then, then they sort of disappear. They yeah, sort of disappear, did. lose their, their, their memory, and then, <laughs> then Venom comes in. And we don't even get to see too much of Venom in full Venom. Only like once or twice at most with with Topher's thing. I swear. Yeah. And just and we didn't have as many cameos as we yeah. have had in others. We did have Bruce Campbell playing the much better <laughs> version since he's been a dick for the last two movies. He's, <laughs> he's actually kind of nice though, the Peter trying to Peter Becker. Yeah. With the engagement stuff. <laughs> Becca. Yep. Uh, he tried his best. Yep, Stanley. Oh, yeah, with a much more direct cameo. Mm -hmm. I guess anyone can make a difference. Mm -hmm. I guess one... Well, my apologies. I guess one man can make a difference. Mm -hmm. Enough said. I don't think there... Stanley cameo! I don't think there is any other cameos from the... No! I mean, maybe a couple if, if you know, if you pay clo much closer attention, but no, there really weren't very standout cameos. Yep. Yep. We pretty much said everything from the good and the bad, so I think you should start first now with the score. <sighs> I've done that for the first two. <laughs> okay. For me, I think I'm actually going to show this film a bit of mercy because with looking at this film again, it's not as bad as we all try to make it out to be. I'm giving it a 7 out of 10. Hmm. I'm going to show the film some mercy. It actually has some really good things in it. Yep. You know, it's not an absolutely terrible film because, oh dear God, we have another one to look at. Foreshadowing. Yeah. Well, I'm going on the same boat with you. 7 out of 10. Give me this, maybe some mainly because I like the fight scenes in this one. Even though the story's convoluted, the actors did what they could with with everything. Yeah. There. But if you think we're too easy on this movie, go find us on Facebook, The Real Screen Team. Find us on YouTube, The Real Screen Team. Like, since there's only the like button that's that's left now on YouTube. And com comment, share, and please subscribe if you're new. Yes, please. We're on the road to a thousand subscribers. Once we reach a thousand, we can start monetizing our videos and we will also make a Patreon so you all can give viewer suggestions and who knows, maybe we could do some special videos particularly for Patreon. But since we're done with Toby, we're now moving on to another Spider-Man. Andrew Garfield, as we discuss The Amazing Spider-Man. But, you want to roll us out? Well, sure. Well, thank you all for coming. Definitely come back and watch us again. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share. It definitely helps. Thank you all. Let's fade to black.